This photo was taken exactly a year ago. 30 years old, en route to becoming the first African to compete in both the Summer and Winter Olympic Games. About to finish my second bachelor's, my second master's, and my doctorate of chiropractic degrees. You know, your first generation overachiever, African, Nigerian. <laughs> Sounds like the fairy tale child, doesn't it? Well, maybe I was, if you ask my mom and dad. <laughs> but I'm not going to stand here in front of you and pretend as though life didn't turn me upside down. Like there wasn't a moment in my life when I sat in the living room making carpet angels, staring at the ceiling, asking God, why? Why is it that every single thing that I want to achieve in life, why does it have to come so hard? Why can't I just get one thing, one thing to be easy for me? Well, Lord knows I couldn't sit here and feel sorry for myself or wear any of those emotions on my shoulders because I didn't need people knowing that the strong friend was falling apart. So I dealt with it, all of it, and I decided that I was going to come up with a process that I would call my own, that I would use to conquer the fear of the unknown. And that's not just in one thing, not just in athletics or academics, but in life. And this is my process. So the first part of this process, accept failure. Mm. Why are people so afraid of that word? Why isn't it an option? You see, because failure is an option. Failure is an opportunity for you to reinvent yourself. I know I've had to reinvent myself numerous times, as I'm sure all of you in here have had to do as well. I mean, think back to a time when you were a little kid, even something as simple as being afraid of the dark, not being able to go down to the basement or into a, a room without turning on the lights. Well, think about it now, some of those same exact people, that is your space of productivity. That is where you flourish in the darkness at nighttime. You see, somewhere along the line, we realized that it was all in our heads. You see, that's what I think about failure. I see failure as an opportunity to own an uncomfortable space and make it my own. Because failure is not a devastating outcome. It is an opportunity to learn and to grow. So then that brings me now to the second part of this process. Be fearless. Mm. <laughs> well, how do I do that? You see, I admit to myself that which I would never admit to anyone else. And then I do it over and over and over again until it somehow starts to marinate in my mind. Let me paint a picture for you. I started a Winter Olympic Bobsled and Skeleton Federation for a sub-Saharan African country. <laughs> so y'all understand where this fear is about, where this is going, right, okay? You want to talk about fear? The idea alone was crippling. Can you imagine explaining to a group of Nigerians why it is okay for you to essentially willingly compete in a temperature that's equivalent to storing yourself in a freezer when you're not dead or trying to preserve a body part. It is the literal definition of madness. Oh, but we're not going to even throw in the part where you got to slide 80 or 90 miles an hour down an ice mountain on a canoe with blades at the bottom or even a skate, an extra large cookie sheet with skates on it. There wasn't a side eye that I could miss. But somewhere along the lines, I had to go back to that point of understanding that that fear had to become my strength. And not because I knew it was bigger than me, but because being fearful, being able to accept that type of fear is what it takes to be able to move forward in life. Do not allow fear to debilitate your potential. So then we come to the third part. Take risks. So what's the difference between being fearless and taking a risk, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. You see, being fearless is a state of mind where taking risks identifies someone as a person of action. Think about that. 
You see, I've had to take many risks in life. Story time. My senior year in college, I had my second heart surgery. This was after quitting the sport of track and field at the University of Houston my freshman year, and then returning back to the sport my sophomore year. I was introduced to this incredible cardiologist. This doctor came to me and told me, I know what's going on with your heart. And I was overjoyed. I was so happy because finally, after seven years of having to get through practice and just dying out and having to figure out what's going on, getting cleared by cardiologists left and right, somebody finally had the answers for me. I couldn't wait. He told me, I'm going to let you get through the season. I'm going to go on vacation. And when we return, we'll sit down and we'll discuss our options. Well, that meeting never happened because he was tragically killed in a plane crash. You want to talk about devastated? <laughs> I gave up on everything after that. But for some reason, God would not allow me to give up on myself. And so I decided to take the risk. I returned to track and field again my junior season only to be carted off the track at the NCAA regional championship meet at the end of the year on a stretcher because my heart rate decided it wanted to go in excess of 250 beats a minute. 45 minutes later, me and the EMT, we looking at each other like this. And he says to me, I think we're gonna need to restart your heart. <laughs> we gotta do what? <laughs> come here, come, 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 come. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> because it's not me that you say you want to come and kill me and then bring me back to life. My friend, you are not God. Come and sit down. <laughs> Thank you. The one good thing that came from that was that we now had all this data, and so another incredible cardiologist was able to, to do the surgery my senior year. And yet again, I was faced with the reality of taking the risk. The heart is not an organ you want to play with. I did that. And let's just say every single athletic accolade that I own to this day is because I decided to take the risk. And not just that risk, but every single risk I've ever taken in life, in everything. And that brings us to the fourth and final part. The final point of this process is to execute. You see, execution is the ability to visualize from start to finish. You see, because everybody can make a goal. Everyone can create a finish line. Everybody can say, that's what I want. That's what I need to get. Well, how do you get there? How do you get there? It is the pieces in between that are the most important. It is every obstacle, every hurdle, every single part that you have to conquer in order to get to the finish line. I mean, you have to be able to be honest with yourself in this process. What does it really take to get to that finish line? It gets so deep that you need to get rid of the finish line. Focus on those pieces in between, how you execute, how you clear these parts to get there. I get so far in this process that I can visualize. I mean, I engage all of my senses. What do I see? What do I hear? What do I feel? What do I smell? What do I taste in every single process part until that finish line starts to resurface itself. And then interestingly enough, that finish line most times is way better than anything I could have dreamed of in the first place because I focused on the execution. You see, we're all human beings. That means we're, we're entitled to be at war between our mind and our gut. But it's in your gut where you find the strength to be able to accept failure, to be fearless, to take risks, and to really, really execute. So I challenge each of you to take that risk. Be comfortable in that uncomfortable space. Show up and conquer your fear of the unknown. Thank you.